Welcome back, it's me Lou. I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review. And today we are featuring Batman Beyond from McFarlane's DC Multiverse line of action figures. Okay, so let's get this started. Um, uh, first off, um, it comes in the standard McFarlane Multiverse packaging. Uh, the figure is framed beautifully with all the accessories surrounding Batman Beyond. Um, as you can see here, I believe we have a Batarang on the upper left, an extra pair of hands, and some blast and rocket effects. Um, looking behind the figure, we can kind of make out um, his, his pair of wings. I believe there's a trading card, and there may or... M oh, there is a flight stand. I take it back. There's a, actually an action figure base. It's clear, and it's behind his legs. Uh, on the back... Um, I'm not normally I'm not too keen on McFarlane fig photography. Um, I much preferred it when they used the comic book images, but I actually don't mind this photograph here. It looks pretty cool. And here's some other figures that are currently out. We have the Flash, um, Gorilla Grodd, uh, Bizarro, John Stewart Green Lantern, and then we have New Fifty Two Nightwing. Very excellent looking figure. Um, let's. Check this out. All right, this is being stubborn. <laughs> it doesn't want to come out. Okay, there we go. Alright, so, uh, first impressions of Batman Beyond while he's still in the tray. Uh, it looks great. Um, I think this figure does a pretty decent job of taking the original look um, and kind of like balancing it out with that modern day aesthetic. So, I'm not sure if this is, figure is based off more specifically from the original animated cartoon or if it's pulling a page out of the um, more recent Batman Beyond comic book series that's out. I think either way, it's it's a nice in between. Like I think if you're a fan of the original animated series, I think the subtle uh, changes and details that they've added won't bother you too much. And at the same time, I think if you're a fan of the more modern look to Batman Beyond from the comic books, I think this does a, a great job of filling that gap. Um, as I stated before, uh, here was a trading card, and then you have the flight stand underneath. Um, the nice thing about this stand is a clear, it's a clear base, a clear post, and then a clear clip. Uh, the only thing that kind of stands out is this the um, the little pin here, which is you know it's metal, but I don't think that hinders the overall look too much, especially if this clip is being mounted behind the action figure. Um, Batman Beyond looks really nice here. Um, as stated earlier, here we have his Batarang, two extra pairs of hands, and I believe that these are rocket effects for his feet. And anyway, as you can see here, he has his um, his wings. And let's take this guy out. All right, I'm gonna set aside the accessories for now as we focus on the action figure. All 
Okay, so I was a big fan of Batman Beyond uh, when the first when the cartoon first aired. I believe it was on Fox. Um, Might have been. I want to say it was Saturday mornings, but for some odd reason, I, part of me wants to say even Sunday mornings, but that sounds wrong. Um, I believe the cartoon aired when I was in college, um, maybe, possibly, maybe my sophomore, junior in college. And I remember watching the cartoon a lot, and I just, I just remember liking it so much. I love the idea of it being very futuristic. The concept was great. They took uh, Batman, a.k.a. Bruce Wayne, and put him in a much more mentor role as he kind of like mentored um, Terry McGinnis in the ways of becoming Batman. And it was kind of cool that Gotham kind of had this much more future aesthetic, uh, which is very much like um, something you'd see maybe out of like Akira. It was a great, wonderful cartoon. I thought it was a wonderful follow-up to the original Batman, the animated series, and Batman Adventures. Um, every now and then, I mean, it's cool. They did try breaking new ground with new villains, new characters, but every now and then they might revisit old themes, which I thought was kind of nice. And uh, the Terry McGinnis character was something I, I liked a lot, and the costume didn't bother me too much, uh, mostly because I thought it was really well-designed. It was all black. It was very sleek. Um, the Batman live-action films, they might have... I think they might have come to a close by that time. I think the last one that might have uh, came out around this time period may, may have been um, was it, it wasn't was it Batman and Robin? That might have been it, the Joel Schumacher one. And for you know for uh, since '89 at that time, you know all the mainstream popular culture versions of Batman that we saw beyond the, um, the animated series, he was always depicted as wearing a black uniform. So I thought it was very appropriate that Batman Beyond. You know, this donned all black uniform also. Uh, and the, the costume this is very, it was, if you watch the animated series, the costume was very bare bones. It was essentially just a black jumpsuit with, a, you know, the utility belt. And then his mask covered his face entirely. At first, I was kind of torn on the original appearance, like how his mask and his face are almost like one. It didn't have the open face like the original Batman costume. But in time, I kind of grew to accept that. Uh, this action figure here is great. Um... Like I said at the beginning of the video, I think it does a really good job of balancing uh, the, the aesthetic from the animated series and also the comic book. Like it has a little bit, uh, has a little bit more realistic, real world sensibilities uh, in, the, in the design. For example, for his gauntlet here, you can actually see some straps and buckles, um, and it has the. This one has the two fins. I couldn't remember if Batman Beyond had two or three fins. And then there's this odd thing underneath. There's like these... I'm not sure if this is a fin or a tab for accessories. I'll look into that in a little bit. On his face here, um, you can see it's not entirely the original Batman Beyond design. There's some lines scribed um, in his face. It's almost giving it the appearance like his face... Is, his mask is made of multiple pieces like seams. But the sculpting is really well done. For a costume that's very bare minimum, he doesn't need all that fancy texturing around his uniform. Um, it's almost like a, a bodysuit or something a scuba diver might wear. Uh, the emblem is it's, it's awesome. It's, it's a nice relieved uh, detail, so it's embossed, so you can actually feel it on his chest. It's not just painted on. That's a detail I can really appreciate. I don't remember Batman... The original Batman Beyond actually having a full belt. For some reason, I always think of them, I think the original anime design, it just might have had the, the center buckle and then the pouches were affixed to the costume. I didn't think there was a belt underneath it. I might be wrong on that. Uh, the cape is cool. I'm kind of torn on the cape. It, it seems like it's a permanent, uh, a permanent fixture to this figure. Like so much of the costume in the original series, Batman Beyond didn't have a cape. I believe his wings actually, they were like hidden and they'd extend underneath or pop out. But on this, in the case of this action figure, his wings are always in place. And I think they might be on some sort of swivel. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's this ratcheted, it's, they're ratcheted and it's nice because they lock in. And it's really, it's a nice tight snug fit. Uh, looks like there was a little bit of, I believe, release agent here, so it's kind of slick. Um, oh, I see what the tabs are for now. Okay, I take it back. So these tabs, um, they tab into the holes on the wings. All right, so I feel that's very unnecessary, uh, just because 
once you ha handle the figure in hand, these don't want to budge. They're they're really stiff when they lock into place, which I think is a plus. It's great. So I think it's kind of it was unnecessary that they had these tabs here. I understand why they have them, um, so you can fix the, the arms closer to the wings and actually give it a glider effect. But in all honesty, I think the tabs on the forearms could have easily been removed and they could have lost that little um, notch in the wing. Uh, the wings are this softer, rubbery plastic, which is okay. They're kind of pointy, so just be careful. You don't want to lose an eye. I kind of feel the orientation. Yeah, so one thing that bothers me with having these tabs here also is that it looks like when you have them on that the that his forearms are upside down because I think the appearance would look look a lot cleaner and make more sense if his fins were mounted underneath his forearms because I think in real life like here's Batman's forearm I believe the fins are mounted underneath his arms they're not mounted on the side so it looks kind of odd that the the fins are protruding from the top not the bottom because I think I, I you know idealistically it should be. You know, the fin should be aimed down like that. At least that's what I think. It looks kind of odd with the fins pointing at the top. Um, but enough about that. Let's get a close look at the figure and start reviewing the detail and the articulation. Okay, so um, uh, sculpting wise... All right, so this is a very bare bones figure um, in terms of the sculpting. Like I mentioned, he doesn't have all that fancy texturing you might find on other other characters like you know Doctor Fate he, or like Green Lantern. Those figures have like really beautiful textures on the uniform. This guy's just, it's just clean, it's just smooth, it's all right. You know, it fits the Batman aesthetic. Um, as I mentioned, he has some seam lines in his face, and that's intentional. Kind of gives his mask a much more realistic look. Um, I love the detail on the emblem. Like I mentioned, it's kind of a relief, so you can actually feel it on his chest. It's just not simply painted in. Uh, the most amount of detail you'll find are in his gauntlets. As you can see here, there's um, some straps and buckles. And it's the two-finned gauntlet. Uh, much like Batman Beyond, he has the clawed fingers right there. And this comes with actually two pairs of hands. It's odd though that um, uh, that I, I would, part of me would have preferred it if his hands are all right, so this hand is kind of like this, and this one's kind of like in between. It's almost meant to look like he's still kind of splayed out, but almost this almost double as a gripping hand. I would have preferred it if they just gave us two hands completely splayed out like this one. Uh, the height of the horns on his head, I think, is decent. It really bothers me that it seems like as we progress further along, how all these different iterations of Batman have shorter and shorter horns. Like, I realize I think the original Batman design didn't have really long horns. And I know someone like Neil Adams, who illustrated Batman in, I think it was like the early 70s or um, somewhat, his horns are like really exaggerated. For me, I kind of like a ni nice balance in between. Um, but I really, it really bothers me when his horns are too short. Uh, the... The height on these horns seem very appropriate for Batman Beyond. I think it's closer to uh, you know what, what the original version looked like. So I'm a little torn right now on his belt. Um, I'm not sure if it's based off of the comic book version, but I do remember in the animated version of Batman Beyond, like I stated earlier, I think his he didn't have a belt. He just had the buckle in the middle, and then the pouches were affixed to the uniform. Uh, I kind of don't like it just because it takes away from Batman Beyond being completely black. It 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 made more sense in the original animated series because it drew all your attention to his emblem on the chest since it's red. And red's like one of the most visible colors in the color spectrum. So for me, it kind of detracts from the importance of the symbol once you add this red buckle underneath. But that's just me being a little bit nitpicky. Um, his legs are completely bare. There's not a whole lot of detail sculpted in. He doesn't even have ass cheeks sculpted in, which is ironic because you know people always joke around about the Joel Schumacher Batmans, especially the scene when they're you know he's suiting up and then he, the camera focuses on his ass. 
Um, I think if if you're a customizer, I think this would make a great base body just because it's missing so much detail in it. Um, it seems like with some little modification, you know, you can actually turn this into like almost any other character you'd want. Uh, like, honestly, I think this would be a great base for a, a Nightwing body. You know, just do a head swap, uh, may maybe make some color changes or re-sculpt the chest a little and you can easily make a really cool version of Nightwing. Or even Red Hood, you know, give this guy a a coat, new head, and or you even keep this head and sand, either sand down or remove the horns, clean up the face a little, paint it red, and you can easily make a red hood figure. You know, just give it a jacket, um, some holsters. But yeah, this is a really nice base body. Um, the physique, it's you know, it's a little bit leaner than some of the other uh, DC Multiverse figures. He's not overly buff. Um, in terms of the articulation, I can, and honestly, I can't stop playing with these wings. <laughs> they're pretty cool, to be honest. It bothers me that they're that they're permanently attached, but at the same time, I don't know. They're pretty. They're pretty nice. So in terms of articulation, his head's on. I think on a ball joint. Um, all right. So a problem I have is I kind of wish he would have more range of movement um, in his neck. Like his head could only tilt up this far, this far. Uh, Batman Beyond's a character that can actually fly. He's not like OG Batman who's like he's, he's like using zip lines and ropes to like traverse through the city. Batman Beyond actually flies. You know that's why he's these glider wings. So I mean, if he's in flying position, his head doesn't look up as far as it should. You know, it'd be nice if his head was not only on a ball joint, but if it had that swivel joint, which allowed his head to f go back further. But it's kind of hindered. So that's as far back as his head will go. Um, he could look down about this far, which is ridiculous. He could look down further than he could look up, and that kind of bothers me. Um, so he's not like other action figures that are produced nowadays where the neck's a separate piece. Um, this guy, his neck is all one piece with this torso, which is all right. Maybe that's a cost-effective move just because, um, you know, the because of the cape gimmick back here or the glider gimmick. And speaking of the glider gimmick, um, as I mentioned before, it's ratcheted, so it, every time you pull it out, it actually has indents and a click into place. So you can actually get some really cool poses out of it. Um, you know, if you want to go nuts and pretend he's like, I don't know, wants to look all glam rock and go into a crazy concert, you can have him out like that. Or you could, you know, as it's shown earlier, you can have it in um, glider position. And then take the four arms with the tabs right here, and then just slot them in. Um, the arm art articulation, it feels nice uh, from what I've handled so far. His arms could rotate, they can go up, and then he does have that McFarlane like ball socketed butterfly joint. And it feels a little bit unnecessary because it's not providing that much more range of movement. It's not like it's allowing him to like clutch in further or arch back more. So I'm kind of still on the fence about this. Like I think it's a great feature having this ball socket butterfly joint. But at the same time, if it's not going to give us that much extra range of movement, I don't think it's ne necessary. And on this figure, for some reason, it seems a little bit asymmetrical. It seems like... This side's giving me more movement than this side, which, I don't know, I'm not sure if it's just my figure or if that's the actual real case. Um, he does not have a waist swivel, but he does have that mid-torso swivel, so it allows his um, swivel below the chest, and it, he can arch back. Um, let's see, get the wings out of the way, see how far it'll go. He can arch back about this far crunch forward that far so it's not that drastic um, it would have been nice if you could go back further or much more forward but he can't um, his body it feels like I'm trying, to th I'm trying to make heads or tails of what this um, oh okay, okay so his lower body it's almost like uh, it's that it's a little bit stiffer than the other figures we've got in the past it's a much stiffer but somewhat pliable uh, sleeve for the lower crotch area so it's almost like boxer, it's almost like briefs, but it's like sleeved over his lower torso. And uh, it does an okay job of like, you know, looking like a continuous piece between his lower waist to his legs. 
it's a little bit gappier on one side than the other like right here it's a little bit more gappier than that side it's a little bit more seamless here but i think that's all right um articulation wise you can kick forward and i think it could there is no thigh swivel and there is no ro real rotation at the thigh, so you'll just have to make do with that. He could kick out about that far. Could he do the splits? No. Um, he has double jointed uh, knees, as you can see the pins there. And the ankle articulation is. Alright, so one thing that this figure does right, as opposed to other McFarlane figures, is at the arm here, at the wrist. It does a really good job of hiding that ball swivel that a lot of McFarlane figure figures have. And so some of the McFarlane action figures like Dr. Fate, the ball joint here is really exposed, but here it's kind of hidden um, because of the gauntlet. And at the ankle, you kind you still see the ball socket here, but it, it looks more like an ankle. It doesn't stick out like a sore thumb like it does on the other figures. And you can bend it forward, you can bend it back. And um, it has some motion to the side, but not as not as much as I think. No, it does. It's just a little stiff, that's all. And then this guy even has toe articulation, so he can flex his toes pretty far up, actually. And his boots are really, really pointed. This guy has some pretty pointed feet. And let's take out some of these accessories so we can show the, how the blast effects work. All right, he has two different sets of hands here. It looks like they're grip hands, so um, I'm just going to leave them there. His bad rank is pretty self-explanatory, nothing fancy. It's the same on both sides. It doesn't look like there's a peg or anything different. All right, so here's the the blast effect or rocket effect for his boots. All right, so as you can see here, there's a socket at the heel and then towards the toe. It's not a socket, but that's actually like, um, it looks like, uh, that's more, that's, I'm trying to get this in focus. Yeah, so this is actually like the repulsion unit on his bottom of his feet that allows him to hover and there's the socket. So you plug the peg in the heel and then this top blast effect kind of mimics like if the exhaust was like, you know, shooting out the rocket flame or whatever. So it's going to go like this. It's kind of a snug fit. And there you go. It looks nice. And I'm sure if you had this figure in flight with a, with a flight stand, it look even better. Word of caution about these though, so I'm not sure the material they're using for the McFarlane blast effects, but I know for like Transformers, especially the ones they've been releasing over the last, I think, two or three years, the blast effects on those, the material they're made of, they seem to like break down or or do something because they kind of like melt. And then there's certain cases where, at least for like some of the Transformer action figures, uh, the blast effects will melt into the port, and then when you pull it out, it kind of leaves like that kind of like plasticky residue um so just a word of caution like i said i don't know if this is made of the same material that hasbro is using on their blast effects but so just keep an eye out you know if you plan on displaying this figure for a long period of time just every now and then i'll plug this from the port and just see how it's doing uh but i think it's a great great extra accessory that they've given this especially since batman beyond you know he flies around it's kind of cool that they give him the rockets All right, so let's talk numbers here. Um, if I had to rate this guy numerically, um, for me, uh, let me think about this. All right, so on a scale of 1 to 10 with this guy, um, for me, it'd be, I'm going to say at least, the highest, at least an 8. At the lowest, maybe like a 7.5. I would have preferred it if his cape was kind of optional and that you can remove it from his back. Um, you know, in the animated series, Batman Beyond didn't always have his cape out, you know, or or his glider wings. Uh, I think the sculpting's beautiful. It's a nice balance between, um, you know, the original animated look and the modern aesthetic. Articulation-wise, I think that's where it kind of hurts the figure a little bit. 
not that I expect him to be as agile as Spider-Man, but with a character this lean, um, you know, I do want a little bit more range of movement, especially like, you know, if he's flying, he could only look so far back, you know, it'd be nice if his head could arch back further. Um, I'm still on the fence about this ball socket butterfly joint. Uh, like in theory, it sounds like a great idea, but then when in practice, it seems like it's not really giving the figures that much drastic range of motion. Um, the sculpting is nice and crisp. You know, there's a lot of sharp points on this guy, so just be careful. Like his horns are pointy, his fins are nice and sharp, and same with his glider wings. So yeah, it's a really decent figure. Um, I like this guy a lot. Highly recommend him. And since we're on the subject of Batman Beyond, I do have other Batman Beyond figures in my collection. I have the original Kenner one. Um, I have the DC Classics version. I actually had two of those. I had the original one and I had the unmasked one. Um, I have a custom Batman Beyond. And I have some uh, a Total Heroes Ultra Batman Beyond, which is my favorite one. Unfortunately, like you know, all those figures are toted up in boxes, so it's kind of hard for me to get at them. But I do have some Batman Beyond material I can share here before we close out this video. Let me just grab it. Okay, so here is... Um, uh, I have this action figure. Um, it's on display, but I can't reach for it right now. But this is probably my favorite version of Batman Beyond in terms of an action figure. This was produced by Mattel. I want to say maybe like this figure might be close to like 7 or 8 years old already. So this is from their Total Heroes line. And uh, this was an ultra figure. I've never seen this in a store, but the the, ver the copy I have of this, I bought it at a, at a collectible toy store. But I don't know where this was available at retail. You know, I, I never saw it at retail. And it blew my mind when I saw this at the, at the collectible shop. So the, what you get here, I think it's like either a five and a half or six inch figure. It's a much more cartoon aesthetic. And his body type, it's a little too thick for Terry McGinnis. But that's only because you could head swap and actually give him a Bruce Wayne head, which is awesome. Because before Terry McGinnis, you know, um, was Batman Beyond, they showed in, I think it might have been like one of the animated features or maybe the early episodes, they showed that Bruce Wayne for a while was the one wearing this costume. And it's awesome. Um, it comes with like a, I think this is like the future JLA version of Adam. It comes with... I think these are the much more proper Batarangs that Terry McGinnis used in the cartoon, unlike the one that he comes with. I think the one he comes with might just be a repaint of, uh, like, uh, McFarlane uh, Batarang. This one, you got actually two extra sets of hands. You had, to, like, these chop hands, fists. Um, you had the Bruce Wayne head. You had the masked head. And then you had this... this head in the middle which is actually just a mask if terry took it off so he could actually hold a mask in his hand which is great and then he has uh four extra batarangs and the the wings here um this is cool that this has the fold out wings but at the same time i like the idea of this where the wings are optional and the wings here are splayed out completely and then you just plug it into the back of the figure so one thing i was mentioning before is that um batman beyond he didn't have an actual belt uh, you know, the buckle was just affixed to the costume with the pouches. So it does bother me that he has this red belt here, but I'm not sure if that's just staying true to the comic book. But yeah, this is definitely, I think, my favorite Batman Beyond figure in my collection. It's awesome. And what we have here, it's a... Um, this is kind of like a... like Almost like a visual guide to like the Batman Beyond... Um, this is the Batman Beyond Files. I about to said, I think a bookstore like years and years ago when the cartoon was still on. And it was, um, just by handling it, you could tell it was aimed more at kids. This feels like something you'd probably find like at a book fair or something. Um, really nice embossed cover. You could feel like Batman's actually, it's like a relief. You could actually feel the, the character on the cover of the, of the magazine. Uh, some beautiful design work. I love the original Batman Beyond logo. And explore the world of Batman Beyond. So you go zooming into the 21st century Gotham City and the adventures of the new Batman in this action-packed book based on the kids. Oh yeah, so I take it back. So this cartoon was on the WB Network. And for me, anyways, I think the WB Network might have been on WGN Channel 9 in Chicago. And I think that was on Sundays, I think. Um, so they talk about how it's been... 
you know, they go into the brief um, synopsis of the cartoon. Since it's been 20 years since aging Bruce Wayne retired as Batman. And they kind of talk about how Terry McGinnis assumes the role as the new Batman. So he's Batman Beyond. Great book. Um, I found this too. This is awesome. So this is from the original old school Toy Fair magazine. Um, it was an insert to kind of promote the Batman Beyond product at the time. So Batman Beyond was new when the magazine when this mag it, when this specific issue of the magazine came out. So they released this with the magazine. It was almost like a primer. And then they talk a little about a little bit about um, Batman Beyond. So you had Terry McGinnis, Bruce Wayne, and then there's the new Jokers. And then here's Batman Beyond as he looked like in the cartoon. So you can see there, I mean, there's some stylistic differences in the costume, but for essentially, you know, it's really trying to adhere to what he looked like here. And I take it back, right? So it bothered me that his fins were on top when his wings are splayed out. But looking at some of the original animation art, his the fins do look like they're poking out from the top. So I, I could... I could I can live with the way this was designed. So I take it back on what I said earlier about these fins. So here's some of the toys that I think it was Kenner that made them at the time. So much like old Batman figures from the 90s, you know, they always gave, they couldn't just give us plain Batman. You know, there's all these different versions of them. There's like Laser Batman, Aqua Batman. The most normal looking Batman uh, wasn't even black. It was like this weird translucent blue. And then there was this other one that was uh, like a solid blue. It wasn't until I think much later they actually did release a Batman Beyond that looked like completely black as he did in the show. And then he, But like this figure, I think he had his wings permanently affixed. They might have been cloth wings. And they were like attached at the wrists. Yeah, so for the Kenner line, this was the this was the plain Batman Beyond figure. It's kind of bothersome that it was actually like this weird blue and not black. And then here is the futuristic Batmobile. It's cool that they actually made that vehicle. And then over here they talk with the Hasbro design team. Okay, so I take it back, but I think by this time, it was coming out under the Hasbro label, not Kenner any any longer. So here is a little interview with the Hasbro design team. And you can even see some of the older Batman figures at the time. There was like Batman Ninjas, Batman Legacy. Some great insight into the design process. We have a designer sculpting. Um, and then here's Batman by the numbers. He talked about all how many Hasbro like figures there were. Like at this time, there were at least 106 Batman animated action figures. Uh, there were 15 Robin figures, 57 Batman figures, eight female figures. So some cool trivia here for the Batman figures at the time. And then they had this contest here. I think you could win like either artwork, money, or just like books. So they kind of cobbled together this custom Batman from different figures, and you had to guess which piece came from which figure. And then here was the Batman Adventures. I think I think that's what it was called. So after the animated series, they did a, a newer series, and these were like revamped character designs. And we have Nightwing, Robin, and some of the new toys. You know, looking at this book, I love this book. It's really cool. The Batman Beyond Files. The World of Batman. So there's actually another book out. It was a, it was a thicker book, and it covered Batman. It was written It was written and designed by Chip Kidd. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but they covered Batman the Animated Series. It's a wonderful, wonderful book, if you can find it. It's by Chip Kidd. And the graphic design and layout is very similar to this, but it's awesome. They go into really in-depth about the episodes... Um, the process. So this is really cool. It's a great primer, especially for a kid, or even as an, a fan or an adult, you know, to get kind of like the info on Batman Beyond. 
It's a nice supplement piece, especially if you're just, you know, really into the cartoon. Goes out over his different weapons. Like, the, the bad rank here is definitely different than the McFarlane one. Uh, Batman Beyond used bolas also. Uh, the new Batmobile. It's kind of like a weird mix between, like, uh, the Flying Spinner from Blade Runner. The Batcave still kind of looks the same. So Blight, I think, was kind of like the predominant villain in the animated series. And then you had the Jokers. Yeah, this is. I remember this uh, Spellbinder, cool villain. It was nice because they just, you know, they created a whole new Rogues Gallery for Batman Beyond. It's not like they just were dependent on, you know, reusing uh, old characters or old characters and giving it like a more futuristic take. They actually developed new characters and villains for Batman to fight. Um, I remember liking the um, Royal Flush Gang a lot because I think one of these characters, I think it was the. The female character. I think she was around Terry's age and they kind of had a thing for each other. Mr. Freeze. So Commissioner Gordon's long gone and his daughter Barbara takes over as commissioner. Um, here's Dana. This is Terry's uh, best friend. She's kind of she almost plays like the Oracle role, kinda. And uh, uh, it's side trivia. Um, the, I can't remember the, the voice actress's name, but the voice actress who voices Dana, I, I think she's the same, um, the same girl that voices Connie from King of the Hill, I think. Yeah, this was a really great cartoon. Um, I, it wasn't that long ago. I think it might have been a few months ago. I think my Target still had the entire like um, complete series on DVD for maybe like anywhere between forty to sixty dollars. I'm kind of regretting not getting it, but I think with like um, what, it, what I think certain subscription services offer it. So I think if you're subscribed to maybe like HBO Max or whatever, you might have access to that. Don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. And then here's a little bit of a look at the storyboards. And then there's these posters that came with the magazine. So yeah, Batman Beyond's awesome. Um, I like Batman Beyond. He's, I don't know, friggin' awesome character. He's something that I always kind of felt they should have made a live-action movie of. Just because I think the aesthetic and the, the story of the character would lend itself well for the big screen. Um, you know, produce something that looks like Blade Runner, but, you know, featuring Batman. I think that'd be awesome. So, wrapping this video up, um, once again, my name is Lou. Um, if you see this action figure and you're a big fan of Batman and Batman Beyond, I highly recommend it. You won't be disappointed. So, until the next video, take care of yourself, be safe, and most of all, be happy. Alright, I'll talk to you soon.